Today we're gonna do something fun and entirely self-indulgent and it's gonna be to rank my all-time favorite art history movements. So I took an art history class when I was in college um, this past semester, just before I graduated, and I learned a ton about Western art history movements. And some of them I liked much more than others, so today I'm going to be giving you a little bit of art history lesson, I guess, as we rank these, but it's gonna be a fun time. So stick around. Sophie Metropolis, a really underrated art YouTuber, uploaded a video ranking all of her favorite art mediums. And I noticed that I never saw a video ranking art history movements. So I thought that I would try my hand at that today and just fill the void, I guess. So I have a template all made already. I'll list the tiers for you guys. Uh, never Cease to Inspire Me is the top one. Then we have Straight Up Slaps, Okay, But Not My Fave really not my thing and just no. This one right here is I think Aaron Douglas. He was an artist in the Harlem Renaissance, a really underrated art history movement. I really love that. I think probably straight up slaps. Alphonse Mucha, uh, Art Nouveau, gorgeous. <laughs> Did a lot of commercial work, really underrated as an artist. I have a, a whole book about him. Um, I totally nerded out a year ago. He was just my favorite artist for a little while. Also straight up slaps, but I might move up here in a little bit. I forget and I can't pronounce their name even but it's a Japanese artist. This is the Japanese woodblock print movement. It really inspired the Impressionists before the Impressionists really were a thing. This was first. Super amazing. Um, their use of perspective is great and their colors and just it, the whole thing is really amazing. I'm gonna move this up here to Never Ceases to Inspire Me. This is, I think, Neo-Expressionism is the name. It's a Basquiat painting. I know a lot of people in like the really prestigious part of the art world really love Basquiat. His work is just so aggressive. I don't really like it, if I'm gonna be honest. I just don't like it. It's just not my thing, like, but really not my thing. Like, I understand why some people like it, but it just, just no. This is, I forget who the painter is, but it's uh, romanticism. Romanticism as an art movement really emphasizes nature. Well, maybe like, okay, but not my fave. This down here is The Swing by Fragonard. It's a Rococo painting. Rococo really emphasizes nature as well, but like in a really like bougie kind of way. If you've ever like read anything about before the French Revolution, Rococo is like that. It's a lot of excess. It's a lot of like really pretty dressed up women, um, but they're used as like sexual objects, basically always depicted in like the nude or with men explicitly looking like up their skirts as in this painting right here. It's pretty to look at, but the sexism is pretty much there. It's pretty overtoned. So I'm gonna say, okay, but not my fave for that one as well. And this is one of my favorites. This is uh, American Impressionism. Really a lot of emphasis on lighting in American Impressionism, so much emphasis on lighting and really some gorgeous lighting effects and colors were achieved in this movement. So never ceases to inspire me. Love Impressionism, love any form of Impressionism. It's just fantastic. It just straight up slaps. This is Artemisia Gentileschi's Judas Slaying Holofernes. Artemisia Gentileschi was a student of Caravaggio. She was an artist during the Italian Renaissance. She was a female painter. Um, this went poorly to many men during this era and she replied, with her thoughts on the matter, which was with women decapitating men. She was like the original artist to say hashtag men are trash. <laughs> and I love her for that, you know, like what a queen. I'm gonna go with straight up slaps. Um, she's obviously a feminist icon. A lot of her work like really, really uh, strongly depicted sexism during this period and like men being really aggressive towards women. She was really outspoken, she was very daring. A lot of men wanted her like killed or at least married off so she couldn't paint anymore. This is hyperrealism. I respect hyperrealism, but it's really just like not my thing. This is American regionalism, I think. The whole movement tried to really depict the people of America in a very realistic way. So the painting looks really realistic and their circumstances aren't really uh, glossed over in any way. But that being said, I find the whole movement, like the paintings in the movement to be really stiff and uninspiring. So I'm gonna go with not my thing. This is uh, a Byzantine mosaic. So the Byzantine period was way before the Renaissance and it's sort of the early Christian art kind of thing. You see it in a lot of mosques and churches from this era. This is in the Hagia Sophia, I think, which was for the longest time, the largest interior building like on the planet. Byzantine art uses a lot of mosaics and it has this really sort of flat perspective because they're trying to get you to understand that like the Christian religious figures depicted in these paintings exist in another realm. They're not on earth. They don't like, so normal perspective doesn't really apply to them. Sorry, I just went off. But uh, I think it's cool, 
but it doesn't really inspire me that much. I don't feel super compelled by it. So I'm gonna go with okay, but not my fave, I think. And this is Netherlandish painting down here. It was painted by Jan van Eyck. I think it's part of the Ghent altarpiece, which is a really significant part of art. Uh, it's like this whole altarpiece um, depicting the Virgin Mary and like other religious figures in Christianity as well. Christianity plays a huge part in art history, at least in the Western world. I actually like Netherlandish Renaissance painting more than a like regular Renaissance painting. There's this element of like observation. So a lot of the painters in Netherlandish painting and Netherlandish painting would actually look at human figures and try really, really hard to depict them as accurately as possible. But you still have these really dramatic settings involved. So it's really kind of a production and I respect that a lot. So I'm gonna go with um, straight up slaps for this one. And then for Renaissance painting down here, this is obviously the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. To be honest, I don't really get the hype. The Mona Lisa, you know, sure, you know, classic, of course, I acknowledge that. But from a personal perspective, when I look at this piece, I don't feel super inspired. That's just me. So I'm gonna go with okay, but not my fave. This one here is a Henry Matisse. It's Fauvism. Fauvism was the super short-lived art movement that really emphasized like excessive color, like really going super out there with the colors. And I totally respect that. Um, but I find the rest of the elements of the style, like really abstract renderings of forms and figures to look kind of funky. Um, so I'm gonna go with not my thing. And then we have French Impressionism. This down here is a Monet. I'm gonna go with never ceases to inspire me because of course I love Impressionism, you guys know this. And this down here is De Steel. It's like this Dutch super abstract geometric movement. I think this is a Piet Mondrian painting. You like, you think when you look at this piece that all of these down, like all these like lines and everything were painted using like rulers, but no, he prides himself on painting every single thing like by hand. So it's like very tediously done. And I don't know, I just like, no, I don't get it. Uh, this is a Picasso. This is cubism. Um, if you guys don't know, Picasso was super sexist that women were, I think, vessels for suffering or something like that. Um, not, not a great guy. I think his two wives committed suicide and then his son did too or something. He was like not apparently a pleasant person to be around. So. I'm gonna go with just no down here. This is a Jackson Pollock. This is abstract expressionism, abstract expressionism. It's just one of those weird, funky modern art movements that I just really don't understand. I don't get the appeal. It's like a bunch of house paint splattered onto canvas and like it doesn't mean anything, you know? It doesn't look, look that good either. I just don't get it. That's my thoughts on that. This is social realism down here. This was painted by, um, I forget his name, but he was a Russian immigrant to the US. And then he painted this piece down here. It's called Politicians at Work. And it was a, like a really scathing critique of politicians in the US during World War II and like the United Nations and how they were super ineffective at promoting the Holocaust and doing anything about the Holocaust. So I'm gonna go with straight up slaps. This down here, last but not least, is pointillism. It's a really interesting art movement. The results of the movement and the painters of the net are super varied in terms of skill level. This is a Seurat. Seurat is like sort of the embodiment of pointillism, but I think in a lot of ways, I like his work the least out of the rest of the movement. There are some other pointillist artists that are like a lot that are really, really interesting that like sort of still keep the more dynamic aspects of impressionism, which came before pointillism and do really cool things with it while still staying sort of true to impressionism. And I like that a little bit more. So I'm gonna go with, okay, but not my fave. And that brings us to the end of this video. Have you guys had fun? Um, I hope you learned a thing or two about Impressionism. Let me know down below what your favorite movements are and I post videos twice a week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.